In the previous lesson, we learned about roles and accessibility. And in this lesson, I want to show you how React Testing Library allows us to query for an element by using its role. Now, as it turns out, React Testing Library actually supports a wide variety of user-centric ways that we can query our DOM for a specific element. With that said, the documentation for React Testing Library always recommends starting with trying to get an element by its role uh, because that is beneficial for both the end user and for other users who might be using other devices such as screen readers. So going back to that accessibility theme, whenever you search for an element by role, you're more li likely to cover the whole gamut of different devices and users that are going to be using your app. That's not to say that you'll always be able to query by role when using React Testing Library, but it is the place where it is recommended to start. So with that said, we can get rid of this console log here. And as we saw in the lesson uh, one or two lessons ago, on this screen object, we have a wide variety of methods for querying the DOM. And there is one here called get by role. All right, and just like the name suggests, this allows us to find an element somewhere in the DOM, somewhere in the rendered output from the component based on its role. So somebody new to this, such as yourself, or even me a couple months ago, might be a little bit confused and uncertain exactly what role each type of HTML element plays. The cool part about React Testing Library is if we're unsure, the output from the library in the terminal will tell us all of the available elements and all of their associated roles. So rather than providing an argument here, what I'm going to do is just provide an empty string because I want to show you that yes, we're going to have a failure because we didn't provide a valid role to this method. But if you scroll up, it's gonna show you the output of the component. That is the first beneficial thing here. We can actually see what app component is when it becomes HTML. So this should hopefully be familiar, right? Because it's the HTML that we wrote in the JSX for the app component. But as you scroll up, if you get above this, there's going to be this separate section right here. And the cool part about it is it says, here are the accessible roles. And it's going to show you the name of the role and then the element in your component that satisfies that role. So for example, there is a accessibility role called switch and the input we have at the top that is a switch, the little toggle that goes between the login mode and registration mode, that is of the role switch. So if, for example, we were to put an argument of switch right here, that would query for that type of role, which would find us that switch element at the top, that toggle, right? In this case, what I wanna do in this test is I want to simulate the user typing into our form and submitting it. So what I actually wanna look for now is going to be the very first input, which is the text field for the email address. So if I scroll down, it's gonna show us all of the various roles and all of the elements that satisfy it. So our H1, for example, at the very top is the role of heading. And right here where we get to this input for our email address, you can see that it has a role of text box, all lowercase. So that is what we want. So what I'm going to do is ask this method, get by role, to find me the first element in the DOM that has a role of text box. And that will be our um, input for the email address. Keep in mind, the get by role method will find the first match, not all matches. If you want all matches, there's a complementary method called get all by role, and that is going to give you an array of results. So let me just show you that if I use this method right now and console log the result. If I output this, you're going to see at the end here, I have an array of one element. If I scroll to the very top, here's where the array begins. So in this case, we only have one element that is satisfying that role. That is our input for the email address and it is being stored within this array. But if for example, we had three inputs, all of type text, then we would have an array of three elements, right? In this case, our password and confirm password inputs don't actually satisfy the role of text box because technically they are hidden because we said their type is going to be password and that is a different category. And we'll talk about how we can query for those inputs in a couple lessons from now. But luckily our email address is a basic text input. So text box works really great, except we don't need to get all by role. We just need to get the first one. And in this case, it's the only one. So I'm going to change this method to just be get by role. 
that is going to find the first occurrence, the first element that lives up to this role of text box. And as we can see right here, what this is going to be is just the HTML input element. This is just the DOM node that has been rendered into the virtual DOM by React Testing Library, creating our component and converting it to the equivalent HTML slash DOM representation. All right, so this is a good sign because if you see something in the console log, that means that the method has worked and it has successfully located an element of that type of role. Because if, if we provide an invalid input or one that React Testing Library cannot find, then we'll see the failure output that we saw a minute or two ago where it's going to list all of the roles and all of the elements that satisfy uh, that role. So again, React Testing Library is gonna try its best to be helpful. And I think if you're unsure about what you're looking for, you can always provide a dummy argument of an empty string to see all of the roles and then find the one that you're looking for and use that. I'm also going to show you another way that we can find out the best role to query by in a lesson or two from now. But for now, this is where I want to leave off. We used the get by role method on the screen object imported from React Testing Library in order to query our DOM, to query our final HTML for the first element with a role of text box. The role of text box will belong to input components or input elements more specifically and inputs with regular text entered into them. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We're taking it one step at a time and I'll see you in the next one.